Hello then, welcome back to the second hour of our program right here on KTN News. Of course, this is Kivumbi 2017. And of course, we begin with our top story this afternoon. And of course, NASA principals were the Supreme Court last night where they exuded confidence that they will win the case this time round. Rilo Ding, accompanied by his running mate, Kalonzo Musioka, said they have gathered enough evidence that will lead to the nullification of the presidential elections. Let's now listen into what the NASA leader had to say. I had to work very hard over this period of time to compile our petition. It has been received by the registrar of the High Court of the and stamps of the Supreme Court. Of, of, sorry, the registrar of the Supreme Court uh, at 11.32 p.m and uh, has registered as the presidential petition number one of 2017. This petition is over 20,000 pages long, containing all the evidence that we have been able to gather, uh, showing clearly that Uhuru uh, Kenyatta did not win this presidential election. We have now left the matter at the hands of the Supreme Court, and we expect nothing less than justice in the Supreme Court. So the rest is going to be handled by our lawyers during the, the hearing of this petition. This petition is going to be historic. It's going to determine the future of our country. And then, as we said, that we will then reserve our other rights. We don't want to say anything more than that. The matter is before the, in the hands of the Supreme Court. Thank you. Of course, that is NASA's leader, Rilo Dinger, speaking there last night outside the Supreme Court where they filed that petition challenging the re-election of President Uhuru Kenyatta. Another story that we are following for you this hour is that the late Chris Msando will today be laid to rest at his Lifunga village in Siaya County. The body of the late Msando arrived in the village last evening to an emotional reception. Our reporter Rashid Ronald is there now, joins us live by way of phone. Rashid, what is happening there now, now and who, is, who are some of the political leaders who are going to attend uh, that burial ceremony? Uh, thank you, Yosef. Uh, it's very interesting that we really can't go live, but there's a problem with the uh, internet. I don't know all of a sudden, but that notwithstanding, the mass is going on as we speak right now at Lifunga Primary School, led by the Archb Archbishop Zacchaeus, of course, of the Catholic Church. Uh, it started uh, about uh, around 10 in the morning, and it's been going on up now. And as we speak a few minutes ago, uh, NASA presidential candidate Raila Odinga arrived uh, with James Orengo and after a few minutes, an interval of about 20 minutes, uh, where Tangula Moses, with, who is another co-principal, and the Moses and uh, Musali Mudavadi also arrived. As you're speaking right now, the mass is going on. And of course, very, very interesting questions are going to be raised here. Remember, the opposition has been raising a lot of questions asking, indeed, the police should be able to tell uh, Kenyans who indeed uh, killed uh, Chris Musando and why. And of course, I'm very sure those are the questions they're going to be asking even up to now, uh, Yusuf. I understand, uh, of course, you're there. And uh, Rashid, did you manage to speak to some of the family members because they're already on record uh, having said that uh, police should first track the investigation, you know, surrounding the cause of uh, his death? We haven't really managed to speak to the family members, but speaking to villagers here, that, those are the questions they have. They want answers to that point. They are saying uh, there must be a reason behind that uh, because uh, Chris Musando died uh, two weeks before election and, uh, and uh, being the man in charge of uh, uh, ICT, uh, the IEBC, of course, the uh, questions must be raised from several quarters, uh, Yusuf. Many thanks, Rashid, for that update. Of course, we're going to link up with you once you sort out that network issue. Of course, Rashid was coming to us by way of phone from Lifunga Village in Siaya County, where the let ICT uh, manager who usually worked with IABC is, is set to be laid to rest today. Now, let's cross over to Kwale, where the county has received a major boost after Shelter Solutions Limited signed a deal with the Coast Development Authority to implement the first phase of Shimoni Integrated Development Project, SIDEP. The 25-year project will spur the economy of the coastal county. The 10 billion Kenya shilling major project 
seek to utilize the desalination technology to generate 10,000 megawatts of chip power, which will in turn be used to boost the mining and mineral processing industries in Kuala. Additionally, the desalination technology will be used to produce 5 million cubic meters of Indian Ocean water on a daily basis to be used for irrigation purposes. Congratulations, a round of applause. Congratulations. Officially, the development project is launched. The construction is going to take you one year, as you, we have gone through. The technology is fast enough. We are getting through all the approvals. And within one year, we should have done the, the entire contract we are signing here is 1,809 kilometers. We are developing the entire Kuala County. So all roads, and I think that should be understood, all roads in Kuala County are going to be developed to bitumen standards. Let's cross over to the international scene now where nearly 150 residents took part in an evacuation drill in a coastal town of western Japan on Saturday in preparation for a possible missile launch by North Korea towards Guam that might fly over parts of the country. Now, the latest, latest civilian anti-missile drill took place in Kotura town at Totori Prefecture, located near the missile's expected path. As a sirens blared from the city's speakers, children playing soccer outside immediately ran into a school for shelter led by their parents and their soccer team coach, who said they were concerned about the missile threat. Uh, U.S. President Donald Trump has warned North Korea it will face fire and fury if it threatened the United States, prompting North Korea to say it was considering plans to fire missiles towards the island of Guam. Now, more shelters are needed for people affected by the devastating mudslide in Freetown, capital of Sierra Leone, on Monday, which killed at least 400 people, with about 600 people still missing. The local government has set up six temporary settlements for people affected. At a settlement in a school about one kilometer away from the disaster site, people were queuing for food and water, most of them women and children. According to Tana Valley head of settlement, they receive relief supplies every day after the disaster. He said they have received enough material to cater for the affected people. Although many organizations send food and daily necessities to them, the biggest problem for them is to solve accommodation. We don't have a place to sleep because it's a school. We are just staying here temporarily. School will open very soon. And we will ask us to go to find another place. We don't have any place to live for now. Big problem now. We need more accommodation. And we need blankets. We need mattresses. We need more support and food for these kids. This accommodation is not enough. But we cannot allow our people to go down in the... The, the, the worst part again, no. Of course, back home and here, of course, we will continue with our conversation here in studio surrounding our top story this afternoon where NASA last night filed a petition, presidential petition, of course, challenging the re-election of President Uhur Kenyatta. Still with me in studio is Brian, uh, I mean, Kakai Kissinger and Brian Moutier. Now, Kakai, let me just begin with you once again. And there's a quote here from uh, uh, NASA leaders, uh, uh, NASA presidential candidate, Raila Odinga, was it two, three days ago, where he said, uh, referring to the judiciary, that you have a chance to redeem yourself what do you read in that uh, one must understand that there are three arms of government mm -hmm. and uh, the three arms of government of course is uh, the judiciary the executive and the legislature and uh, according to constitutional law and practice and experience these three arms of government operate independently and these three arms of government uh, provide synergy for each other, for each uh, arm of government now nasa's leader saying those sentiments one may look at them and say that they were political sentiments mm -hmm. they are basically political rhetoric and he was entitled to say those sentiments because that's what he felt mm -hmm. 
I do not think that uh, in this country there can be any arm twisting of any nature uh, from any other member of, of, of public or from any other institution to arm twist how another uh, independent arm of government um, should operate. Remember that uh, the new constitution ushered in uh, various uh, milestones in terms of uh, independence of institutions and uh, executive is independent, judiciary is independent and um, the ex legislature is independent. Mm -hmm. But then the judiciary plays a very critical and fundamental role in terms of checking the other arms of government. So it will check the executive, it will check the, um, the parliament. Mm -hmm. We've seen situations whereby judiciary has injected parliament, judiciary has injected the executive. And that's why democracy exists, and that's why we Kenyans fought for this constitution to provide uh, proper checks and balances. We've seen institutions challenging uh, judiciary and judiciary standing firm. Mm -hmm. So the question is not whether judiciary should, uh, should uh, redeem itself from the 2013 presidential petition. The question is uh, whether the judiciary is supposed to do what it's supposed to do. And uh, knowing very well the judiciary, judiciary is very proud and very independent, mm -hmm. and judiciary will do what it has to do first with the, with the circumstances at hand. Mm -hmm. So it's unfortunate that statement that came from a political leader, but you have to take it that it's a politician mm -hmm. talking and like he that. Has to make political and he has statements. to take a political statement. But you cannot um, twist the judiciary. You cannot. Mm -hmm. Uh, Brian, speaking about the 2013 ruling which legitimized uh, the then uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta's election, uh, did those who are saying the bench has more or less remained the same apart from three other judges? Uh, I don't think it's the same because mm -hmm. we have seen some new impetus bring, being brought on board. Of course, Isaac Leonola comes with that liberal mind. Mm -hmm. We have seen also the entry of the new CJ, of CJ, of course, Maraga, mm -hmm. and also the deputy, uh, Mwilu. And uh, these are new entrants in the market, apart from Smoky Wanjala, Ibrahim Mohammed, mm -hmm. uh, maybe somebody to do with um, Jokindomo, those who were there before. But now that kind of new, you know, talent coming on board, of course, is, they must breathe some fresh air in the way they are going to handle the whole process. Mm -hmm. So I do not see it being the same, same kind of uh, composition as far as 2013 is concerned. Mm -hmm. But again, we have also to critically look at the these uh, few, uh, these fellas, because of the kind of uh, uh, assignment they will be holding for this country, because all, I, all eyes are focused on on them, and they have to, you know, uh, be beyond reproach. They have to stand the test of time in terms of what they are going to roll out, mm -hmm. uh, because if they do, you know, not stand on their ground and conduct themselves in the professional man that they ought to, then this country will actually judge them harshly owing to the fact that we have a president where things did not go the way for NASA. Mm -hmm. And maybe when Raila says that uh, they, have a, they have a chance to redeem themselves as much as it's a political way, is a political statement, of course you cannot rule the fact that uh, <coughs> he was actually trying to to, to, to put them on toes to ensure that they tore the line in terms of adherence mm -hmm. to the, you know, the right processes, the right procedures, mm -hmm. the right conduct, and also the right deliberation when it comes to ruling out on the whole affair. So to me, I think it was a political statement. Mm -hmm. But uh, I also want to say that uh, as much as we are talking about that independence of the judicial body after, uh, according to ch Chapter 15 of the Constitution, mm -hmm. we also see some kind of interdependence that we cannot rule out. While we are likely to see the court actually following the due process, uh, rule of law, adherence, and all that, they, they also have to you know, work it out in the sense that they also have to ensure that they do not leave the country polarized because they have a role to play in terms of jail in this country, mm -hmm. making it stick and take together. They are pretty aware that they cannot rule out something that will throw this country into the ditch. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they have to be guided by that uh, key wisdom, that fundamental wisdom that they hold. Yeah. And that's what keeps them actually on that table. And of course, we expect the ruling in the next, is it 14 days? Yes, 14 days. 14 14 days. Of now, of hypothetically course. speaking, mm -hmm. Kakai, let's say the court goes ahead and nullifies this election. What will happen next? Anyway, give us the scenarios in both ways, whether they nullify the election <laughs> or give the election, re-election of President Urkin at a clean bill of health. You know, we have, uh, we have basically, in the next two days, we are going to see the parties serving each other. Uh, the, the, the petitioner, Raila Amolo Adinga, serving each other. Mm -hmm. And the following, four, uh, which has to be done within, within two days. Mm -hmm. Now, this is an improvement, because in the past, in the old constitution, you wouldn't serve. Yes. You had to serve the present personal, but now we have changed this. So service is now uh, done in differently. It can be direct service. It can be through a newspaper advert, which mm -hmm. is circulating widely and all that. Mm -hmm. And you can also serve by way of online. You can do uh, 
actually the law says the petition rules say you can within six hours of yesterday yes. they must have sent it by email mm -hmm. to the other party so once that is done in terms of timeline so those two days are d gone mm -hmm. we have then four days four days in which the um, the respondents and in this case uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta, IBC mm -hmm. and others will have four mm -hmm. days to respond mm -hmm. and once you respond yeah. then you have actually eight days to deal with this matter. So you are looking at a very strict timelines. Now what will happen then in the pre-trial conference they will narrow down on the issues that have to be discussed and the evidence that will be relied mm -hmm. and at that point then the court can order IBC to preserve certain documents because the documents or the custody of these documents are in the domain of IBC to verify with these documents that are coming from NASA because you don't know what NASA is filing and whether that's the, the, the legality. Now, once that is done, then the, the hearing will be done and the decision will be made within the 14 days. Now, once the decision is made, it takes a decision. Either you validate that uh, His Excellency Uru Kenyatta was validly elected and that all those anomalies that NASA is relying on yes. does not constitute to invalidate the, the petition. Mm -hmm. So that means, therefore, that uh, Uhuru Kenyatta will be declared the validly elected president. Mm -hmm. so the petition, let, let him finish <laughs> the time. <laughs> okay. so it means, uh -huh. therefore, that okay. the, the petition will have, uh, will have flopped. Yes. The other thing will be that, okay, fine, we've realized that the evidence that has been given to us by NASA are overwhelming. <laughs> Let's assume, for example, it's an issue of fraud or whatever it is, yeah. it's overwhelming, and we think that the election was badly managed, and therefore uh, we should now invalidate the, 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 the election. And no, we Once have that election is now. done, mm -hmm. then you have 60 days in which uh, you have to do a presidential election again. We're seeing the end of October now. E exactly. Mm -hmm. So you have to do that within uh, 60, 60 days. days. And that means, therefore, that the law now zeroes only on the two best candidates. So it will just, the ones who can add the highest votes. In this case, President Uhuru Kenyatta and, and Raila Odinga. Raila Odinga. Uh -huh. now go for that as a new election. But of course, so those are the but that of will course, be October. But of course, uh, Akuro, of course, uh, has actually expressed his desire to be joined in the court. So uh -huh. he can also be part of the Now, I, I can come to that. Mm -hmm. The issue of being enjoined to court, uh, the petition is between uh, Raila Molo Odinga and His Excellency uh, uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't preclude any other Others, interest yeah. member Absolutely. from being so enjoined be in the petition. In the mm -hmm. But you only get enjoined the petition when now what you call introductory applications are being made. Mm -hmm. uh, there will be a time during the pre-trial where people will come and say, we want to be enjoined in the petition and mm -hmm. we have reasons. Now you have to prove to the court and seek permission of the court to enjoin you. So it's allowed under the petition uh, rules of 2017. Mm -hmm. yeah. So for example, if uh, my friend uh, Kuro Court wants to be enjoined, he will come and say he wants to be enjoined and give reasons as to why he wants to be enjoined, the court will have to assess whether what he's giving or reasons will add value mm -hmm. to the case or not. Civil society institutions, for example, can decide they also want to be enjoined and that's allowed. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing wrong with, the, with the being enjoined. But remember, everything must be settled or solved within the 14 days provided by law. You've talked about the 60 days and uh, we are in October now as you're speaking. Yes. And let's say there's another petition. That means it will cross over to 2018. No, the, the, it can only be that. Uh -huh. can only it can one. only be that. We, mm -hmm. we only have a, one petition before us mm -hmm. where the other parties are going to be enjoined. That is it. Once it's finished, it's finished. And there's when no court, appeal. There's, there's, there's this no, is the highest final. court. Yeah. Actually, we'll wait and see what Jubilee also has to say as far as, you know, of course, they're also having their own legal you know, team to mm -hmm. poke holes into the evidence, the, the huge evidence that NASA has uh, brought forward. Now, let's cross over to what is happening in the county government. We've seen the swearing in of about eight governors yesterday. And today, I think there are also others who are going to be sworn in. We've seen uh, Babayao, Ferdinand Wichito being sworn in as the Kiambu governor. Did he surprise you, Brian? Uh, no, not really. Mm -hmm. I saw it coming, of course. Uh, I would, it surprised me when he trounced Kabogo during the nominations. Yeah. But in, it did not surprise me after winning the election because in some areas, as I always say in this uh, studio, is that uh, in some areas, when you have that ticket uh, of the party of the land, of course, you are absolutely assured or 90% chances of going through. So Babayao did not surprise me after clinching it. We saw it coming. Uh, but for Laboso, of course, it was a close, uh, close one. Of mm -hmm. course, she surprised me because uh, I thought it would be such a narrow margin for whoever will win, either Ruto or Laboso. But when she took it, of course, uh, I found uh, I didn't expect the margin to be that huge. Mm -hmm. But for Machakos, <laughs> I also had some sort of uh, situation where I thought it would be a close one. But the margin between Mutu and Wavinya was uh, huge. Too big. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. and but but for Makuone, of course, where I do come from, of course, I saw it coming that Governor Kivuta uh, was supposed to win, to return with a big margin, owing to the frosty relationships that he had mm -hmm. with the former crop of MCs. But I thank God that uh, at least that is on the way because out of uh, 30, that one, of course, only, only one, one survived. Made it back. And that uh -huh. was a huge statement from the electorates uh -huh. that they heeded the call by Governor Kivuda to weed out these uh, fellas and uh, replace with new dynamic MCs. And uh, that one, I had an opportunity, Yusuf, to interact mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. And I can ascertain to you that uh, that crop of MCs in Makuen is one of the best because they are young, most of them professionals. And when you interact with them, you could hear that they were really you know, up to the game. And uh, I think that's the best news to have happened to the people of Makweni. Of course, now, there's, that, the rest, uh, and there's the rest for speaker. You're going to tell us more about that shortly. Uh, of course, but of Kekai, course. I'd like add, to add on that uh -huh. first, uh, mm. is that you, you understand the swearing in of, uh, of county governments yes. uh, done immediately after the election, mm -hmm. as opposed to, to the president. Mm. And, uh, and this is uh, the law requires that uh, once a governor wins, mm -hmm. irrespective of whether they are facing a petition or not. Or not Why is it not yes. the case with the president? The, the, the county governments have to go on. Yes. County mm -hmm. governments have to go on, number one. Number two, uh, even if I swear, uh, even if um, judiciary swears in a, a county governor, mm -hmm. it doesn't pre stop someone from petitioning uh, the removal. Because mm -hmm. once you petition, you can still remove them and then they swear. But the in. governor has to so be sworn in The first. governor has to be sworn in and mm -hmm. county governments must uh, continue operate. operating. But what, what I was... Uh, what I was impressed with uh, before we got to the other issue mm -hmm. was the mere fact that some, one, the judiciary has done very well in terms of publishing the lists of county governments and, and the serving the respective judges in all the counties. And, and, and mm -hmm. then posting respective judges and magistrates all over the 47 counties to, to do the oath taking because swearing in is a responsibility of the, the judiciary. Yes. So the inter, interdependence and, uh, and providing synergy for each other. Mm -hmm. What I was so impressed about was that I watched. Kiambu. Mm -hmm. I watched Kiambu swearing in ceremony, and I realized that uh, Kabogo came to participate. Present. Kabogo came to participate and mm -hmm. gave a very good speech, and basically conceding that, look, I thank you very much. You gave me a chance. I served, and my time is over, so giving another person. The same, mm -hmm. the same thing Machakos, happened in Kajado. In Kajado, uh, in Kajado mm -hmm. the same thing mm -hmm. happened in Kajado, and it was very impressive. There was nothing to happen in Machakos, <laughs> because it was the, the <laughs> Still a frosty one. And, uh, yeah. and uh, it happened there. What I didn't like is, uh, is uh, Meru, 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 where Kim Munya uh, went no, missing. Munya. Uh, Munya. Mm -hmm. Munya went missing. He's but disputing it just the election. Shows, he's disputing the election. But mm -hmm. it just shows that... Uh, that there's a general feeling from some governors, if this trend goes on, there's a general feeling from some governors mm -hmm. that the election was free and, uh, and fair in terms of that contest. Mm -hmm. of despite the, half of them not making it back. Despite half of them making it uh -huh. back. Uh, so it was, it's a general feeling there. Mm -hmm. we, uh, I, I, I liked what Songo did, uh, which was very impressive. I think Songo has begun on a very uh, good note. Front note, of A course. very, very fr mm -hmm. front note. And, uh, you don't underestimate uh, mm -hmm. uh, Songo. Songo has uh, started cleaning up the city already, mm -hmm. <laughs> removing mm -hmm. the campaign posters and all that. And Songo refused well. to mm. use 25 million shillings for swearing in a ceremony. Mm -hmm. There's another governor, Gilo. I don't know from where, who said Ngilu did yeah. the same, uh -huh. saying, yeah. look, I don't need uh, money. We yeah, just need a million. Bible and a space. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there's a goodwill that is coming we from We might governors. eventually yeah. get new yeah. crop of governors who are going yeah. to make sure that these mm -hmm. county governments are yeah. successful. Yeah. Yeah. Briefly, your last comment, Brian. We have a little minute. Sir. Oh, all right. Uh, Yusuf, you are very much aware that I'm also gunning for the speaker. And mm -hmm. that's one of well, the uh, <laughs> most <laughs> hassled upon positions uh -huh. in this country. In fact, uh, you, you can see the nature of leaders that it has attracted at co across the country. And uh, Makuani is not exceptional because I'm there. So the election is not over yet. There are those who are eyeing the speaker. There are those who are now, after losing some yeah. key positions mm -hmm. as members of parliament, Senate, are now going for the speakership because it's not a small position. Of course, this is the number three in the county. And in the event that a governor is not uh, able to execute. He's the one who assumes power. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I'm, I'm, I'm part of the race. I'm in the race. And I would want to wish mm -hmm. the people, the of course, MCs I'm of sure, I'm sure, I'm sure they're listening. Many thanks, <laughs> Brian Mutier, for your input. Kakai Kisinja Zolos, many thanks for your input. Mm -hmm. Of course, that uh, conversation brings us to a second part of Kivumbi 2017 right here on KTN News. We're going to take a very short break. We're going to have a special documentary for you, but we'll be right back with much more. Don't go too far.